Hey fam, it's me Aaron for a comic show. I'm talking about new comics now. There's a few books this week, not much from the, the big two, but there's some independent stuff, creator-owned stuff I want to talk about. And uh, thanks everyone for coming out to our free comic book May on Saturday. Uh, this Saturday, we're gonna have a free hot dog day in the Geek Easy, where you can have hot dogs. And uh, also we're having a benefit uh, Wayne Casino night with some drag queen and some like, uh, I don't know, it's a benefit for homeless, uh, homosexual teenage zebras. Um, it's called Zebra Coalition. It's gonna be awesome. So come check that out. Um, and I mean, we were big fans of Teenage Mutant Turtles, so I mean, why not homeless, homosexual teenage zebras? It's, you know, kinda, it's in the same wheelhouse at least. Um, Age of Ultron 8, this book is like seriously WTF. I mean, I say WTF because I don't wanna say the F word, but. The first issue, you know, we're like, well, when, when does this take place? It says now, but it's not now. The other books are now, and it's all crazy. Well, now this one's just even crazier. It's like this alternate present because the past was changed. And, um, you know, it's still fun. It's still Bendis and crazy stuff. But it's like, I can't really get to caring about all these crazy future, present, weirdo characters. And then, like, the cover of the next issue is Wolverine killing Wolverine. I mean... If anyone killed Wolverine, I guess it's Wolverine, but it's just weird. And at this point with eight, I'm ready to see how this is gonna sync up to the actual Marvel now, now, the universe. But, you know, if I don't mention this, people are like, why didn't you mention it? And it's like, cause I don't know what to say about it. It's freaking crazy. And you know, anything I say might be a spoiler. I don't know. Uh, vibe. I know you guys were pissed off about DC canceling uh, two books that I like, Demon Knights and uh, Dial H. I would just spotlight, uh, did a spotlight on uh, Dial H Volume 1, and I said, you know, this book might be canceled, it's on that bubble, well, it's canceled, so, you know, sorry about that. Uh, Demon Knight's Rob Vendetti's doing fine with Green Lantern, but, you know, he was, he was kicking some ass with that book, I enjoyed it. But Vibe, support Vibe, it's fun. It's, you know, yeah, I know they put Batman in everything now just so it doesn't get canceled, but um, this Batman cover is kind of a fake out, and Five is just this underdog character, and it's an underdog book, and I just like the feel that, you know, if he wouldn't even think he deserves his own title. And I love that they put Sterling Gates as the writer. It's like Jeff Johns decided to give Vibe an ongoing series just so he could give his buddy Sterling Gates a title to write because he's the underdog of the DC writer's house. I mean, he's like, sorry we made you work with Rob Liefeld on that Hawk and Dove, and sorry that your um, Kid Flash series never happened because of Flashpoint, and, you know, uh, just, but this book, Vibe, is fun. And I like the character Vibe, and I, I like Gypsy in here, and... I just like the idea that this underdog has this power that is going to be integral to the DC universe, integral to the whole dark side thing and all that, and I dig that. Uh, Wonder Woman, this book is just so good. Um, my guys did a spotlight video just on Azarello's Wonder Woman and how much they loved it. Um, they forgot to do the little twirl, but um, you know, they're not perfect. But uh, Azarello, this is the supporting cast of the other, you know, gods and goddesses, it feels a lot like the Endless from Sandman to me. Like, I don't feel like um, they're just taking up panel space and it's like, well, when are they going to get back on, you know, the superheroes and the villains? It's just, I like that supporting cast. I like seeing them. And it's a fun book. And if you've never liked Wonder Woman before, you might like this. So check out the, the volumes. And Aquaman Volume 2 is finally out. Why did it take so long? I don't know. And Volume 1... The soft cover's out this week too, which, you know, the hardcover's been sold out. And check out Aquaman. I'm sure you've heard about a lot of the buzz of Jeff John's Aquaman. And Volume Two's out with the others. It's kind of um, this league before the Justice League that Aquaman was in. And uh, some of those characters are reoccurring in, in the, um, the new Aquaman story arc. Moving on to the creator own stuff, Charles Soule, this guy. I love this guy. Uh, he did that 27 book, the first and uh, second act. And it was about how those different. All, everyone died at age 27, you know, like Joplin and, and Morrison and Cobain, like they're, they're all, you know, so what was, is there some god of fame? Is there some type of um, muse that they make some crazy Faustian deal with? Uh, really good stuff. And uh, what put Charles Soule on my radar in a big way is this Swamp Thing. Those first two issues, that two issue story just was awesome. Just in and out fast, you know, threw that Superman in there. And I love that, you know, Superman with Swamp Thing, hearkening back to Alan Moore's little story with Superman and Swamp Thing, and I'm just his biggest fan now. And this Strange Attractors, this is that Archaea doing what they do best, the beautiful, original, 
hard covers. It even has a, an extra fold-out thing where it, it interacts with the story where you're reading a file as the character's reading a file. And this is basically New York City and this guy that has all these mathematical complexity theories where he makes New York City work. And the, the basic premise is, you know, after 9-11, New York got back functioning almost instantly. And when you think of how crazy that is, how much food has to be shipped in there just so that people don't starve because, I mean, there's no farms in New York City. And uh, juxtaposition that to Katrina and New Orleans, how, you know, it's still reeling from the effects of that where New York City is just boom, boom, boom. And he postulates that it's because there's these brilliant mathematicians that make New York work. And if that kind of complexity stuff strikes a chord with you, read this. It, I just, I can't say enough about this book. I read it in one sitting, I loved it. I had to buy it at C2E2 even though I was gonna get it here you know, weeks later, it's just so I could read it on the plane back and Charles Soule is going somewhere. He's going to be a big deal with um, both DC and Marvel and you know, his own creator own stuff. Uh, Peter Panzerfaust, this book is not just something to sell on eBay, it's actually a good book and volume two is out, it's hook, you know, you see, you know, you saw that coming if you read volume one and the dude lost his hand, you know, oh, he's gonna come back as Captain Hook. But what I like about this is here we get the Peter Pan type of stuff that we would have gotten in Fables, but uh, they chose not to do that when they changed the um, adversary. And we get it in World War II Germany, so it's Panzerfaust. It's, it's cool. It has this sense of wonder and the Lost Boys, and it's just very smartly written. It's a fun book and, you know, crazy low print run, so it gets all its uh, press from like how crazy you can get money on eBay and blah, blah, blah. I don't care about any of that. I care about it's a fun, well-written book that you'll enjoy if you like fables. Uh, moving on to Cross, Wish You Were Here, Volume 2 is out. This is the stuff that was free online. It might still be free online. I don't know. I don't read comics online. I read them on the toilet bowl. And, um, but with this, it's the same characters from Volume 1. It's the, where all the other Cross are like in and out. You get these characters. You have them fighting the Cross and their story's done. This is more of a... Um, kind of Walking Dead feel where it's these, these same survivors over the long haul. How is their life six months from now? How is their life a year from now? And I enjoyed it. You know, I, I like Simon uh, Spurrier and um, I like Crust and I, I like reading it in the volumes, not just because I sell comics. I just, I don't know. I like that. I mean, it helps me be regular. Uh, My Little Pony, volume one's out, has the glitter cover, which is awesome. I just love that, that you know, glitter. And all the covers are in the back, which is crazy fun covers. And they just did a really good job capturing the magic of the animated show. Uh, Katie Cook got a lot of the different things that makes the show so cool with different references to internet culture and all that stuff. And um, the Andy Price's art is so expressive and the facial, just the eyes and just everything about it. It's, if you like this show, you will like the comic. I, I can pretty much guarantee it. If you don't like the show, then just, you know, Ignore it, because, you know, you don't like the show. Um, I do know one dude that doesn't care for the show, but likes the comic for some reason, so maybe he just likes comics a lot. It's a well-done comic. Speaking of well-done comics and shows, Adventure Time, this is original graphic novel. It's OGN, you know, original graphic novel, playing with fire, and the fire prince has to team up with Jake to save Finn, you know, because it's Adventure Time. They don't have to do the old gender stereotypes, and um, it's cool. It's nice to get a whole original story, and it's done by... Um, uh, different webcomic people that, and a dude that's been doing the actual Adventure Time comic in art, and I dig it. I like that they're doing original stuff and putting it out, and uh, Boom has been really doing a great job with Kaboom with these kids' books that have kind of reinvented kids' books. It's like, yeah, they're for kids, but they're also for adults with ADHD, so, you know, I'm enjoying them. And regular show, I got the Phantom variant that looks like an homage to Fantastic Four One. And I read this, loved the art, really thought that it captured the, um, the spirit of the show without just being a facsimile of the animation from the show. Just this, um, I can't pronounce her last name, Allison Sturgeblu. Um, I actually, um, she sat by me at a Valiant dinner at C2E2. Really nice, nice woman. And she was a little nervous about um, how her art would be received. And I'm telling you, I love it. And I like that it's not just a direct you know, copy of the show, but it's in that same vein, and I've really dug it. It's funny. There's a mosh pit. Uh, if you like regular show, again, it just seems like they they struck gold here with um, licensed properties. It's just crazy, you know. Uh, decades ago, licensed comics, they put crappy people on it and just 
crapped him out, and it was just, eh, whatever. But now, Boom is really kicking some butt, and IDW with My Little Pony freaking nailed it. So, you know, who cares if DC screws up every three days, and uh, Marvel is, you know, whatever. Uh, we have a lot of good creator-owned stuff, and the licensed properties are better than they ever were. So, you know, keep enjoying comics. Thanks, bye-bye. Thanks for watching, click subscribe, share it on Facebook, check out our Facebook, and if you're local, come to our store. We have this Geek Easy bar with like beer on tap and grilled cheese sandwiches, and on Tuesdays we have Geek Trivia where you can win your bar tab. We have uh, open mic night this Thursday. We have free hot dogs on Saturday. Uh, back to Friday we have like a Comic Con pre-party for a, a local con that's gonna have some great artists here. And uh, we're just going to have a blast. Even a, a crazy map event, like I mentioned, where we're going to have drag queens at casinos and, and just nutty stuff. We're probably all going to get arrested. Thanks. Bye-bye.